Now we've got the vice ranking member of the Homeland Security Committee, Delia Ramirez. Thanks so much for taking the time. No, thank you for having me. So we've now got a border bill that was introduced in the Senate. Um, I'll get to your position on it in a moment, but I, I want to discuss its viability first, because in the House, Republican leadership has already promised that it's dead on arrival. Um, Steve Scalise has come out against it. Elise Stefanik has come out against it. Mike Johnson's come out against it. Is that true, uh, or is there a way that it could circumvent the leadership's opposition? The only way that any bill can circum circumvent the leadership opposition would be through a discharge petition. But with a discharge petition, you have to get 218 members, which would mean literally every single Democrat plus a couple of Republicans to get to 218 to sign this petition on the House well, asking for the bill to come directly to the floor without committee. Some people have began talking about that as a you know, possibility, but let's be honest, that would require a number of us that are most likely not going to vote for this bill, wouldn't vote for this bill, to have to sign this petition, which I see that to be at this moment nearly impossible. Now, to that exact point, this bill uh, has split both parties in terms of support, with some Republicans opposing it because they don't want to lose a potent issue to campaign on ahead of November, and with some Democrats opposing it because it would be too tough on border security and doesn't include immigration reform. Um, so can you speak about your position on this bill? I mean, look, this bill is a supplemental bill. The president came to us in August and said, we need some supplemental funding for a number of things. At that point, he had incorporated some policy requests, um, but certainly some money for additional uh, resources for processing cases, supplemental money for interior cities like Chicago, New York, and the list goes on. We now are at a place where we're using supplemental to create permanent policy, to be honest, to me, dangerous, uh, because it sets a precedent that we are going to use this moment to make major decisions, in this case, around immigration. Next time, it could be about health care. Uh, and the list goes on. So no, I don't support this bill for a number of reasons. One, it takes us back on immigration policy almost 100 years. It, re it reinstates practically Title 42. It also really challenges the critical fear interviews, which is a process that people seeking asylum go through to determine if they, in fact, have an asylum case and can stay here. It would really actually change up so much of that and it contemplates mass deportations. I mean, think about it. None of this actually addresses, one, the root cause of migration. Why are there four or 5,000 people coming to the southern border? Why is there not legal pathways, right? Uh, it doesn't address any of that. And quite frankly, it doesn't do anything for the people that have been in this country, as my uncle reminds me, 20, 30 years without a work permit or any pathway. Now, as far as the Hispanic members of Congress and the Senate are concerned, is that position shared by the majority of that caucus? I would say that the majority of us feel this way. It feels like to me we're taking the bait. Uh, we are now contem contemplating Republican policy on immigration just so that Republicans can say we've done something. We know this is just a scapegoating tip, something that they're using as their campaign strategy to be able to demonstrate chaos through November. Republicans have said it, Speaker Johnson has said it. He has no interest in doing anything really around the border until Donald Trump gets reelected. So that tells you that for as much as I hear in Homeland Security, border, 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 or absolute top priority should be impeaching Mallorcas because he's not addressing the border and we're bringing solutions. First of all, the impeachment will do nothing. Number two, they have no solutions because if they actually wanted to address fentanyl, or create legal pathways, they would work with us and allow us to introduce amendments that they can vote on. They have no interest in that. Well, what would be your top priority in terms of immigration and the border that, that you didn't see in this bill? Look, my absolute first one is, let's make sure that we create some forms of legal pathways so that people don't have to go through um, coyotes, they call it, or don't have to go through the dangers of crossing rios, rivers, Rio Grandes, like my mother, um, cross so that people are able to stay alive. So how do we create legal pathways? Number two, how do we get adequate staff personnel to process these cases as quickly as possible while working with our State Department uh, and Congress in really determining what are the issues in so many parts of Latin America that is causing people to migrate at the rates they are in Ecuador, in Venezuela, in Salvador, in Guatemala. So we have to look at all of that. But let me tell you the last part of that is, we have an opportunity in this particular moment. 
We are excited that we have more jobs um, than we have had in a very long time. We also have a lot of job openings. This is the moment that if we're going to talk about border and we want to say anything about immigration, the president can use executive action, if not the supplemental, to expand work permits, bringing 8 million people into the tax rolls, creating revenue so we can address these deficit issues that Republicans ought to talk about, while also creating stability across the country. Now, there are members on both sides of the aisle who've pointed to the record number of border crossings and who've said that that situation at the border, as it's as it's happening right now, especially in the last month, is untenable. Short of a bill enacting comprehensive immigration reform, which isn't going to happen as long as Republicans are in the majority in either chamber, uh, what do you think would alleviate the situation? You know, I said this on Homeland Security. Do people ask themselves, why is there four or 5,000 people at the southern border uh, at the rate that they are every week? There are things happening in these countries and the relationship that we have with them, we have to actually assess it. How are we helping address corruption in some of these countries where you're seeing democratic backsliding? How do we actually help provide economic development so there are jobs created there by the people from the country, not just the jobs that we bring there, right? Which we should try to have as many jobs here in the US, but how do we actually help create some of that? And then the last part, I keep hearing Marjorie Taylor Greene say, or others, definitely not her one out of guilt, but we want legal pathways. Let's talk about what legal pathways look like, expanding visa programs for work, because that actually would mean less people at the southern border. They'd go through the protocol of going through our um, through, going through our embassy and then processing through. These are the things that we could be doing. Because here's the thing. You can build the wall you want. People will still come. You can go ahead and create these draconian policies that will detain people, create mass deportations, and people will still be coming. The difference, more people, more children will die. From a political perspective, is there any worry that not passing this bill would allow Republicans to run on the issue of the border and then take power in November and then pass something far more draconian than we have right now? This is it. Uh, they, the Republicans are not going to pass a border bill because they need to make sure that they continue to show their image, their narrative of border. And as long as President Biden is our president, they can try to put the blame on him when in reality, decision making around what policy gets passed, at least at the legislative level, is on the Republicans' hands. We were there already. They have decided what is the one thing we could use against Democrats that we won't do either so that we can win the White House and keep the House. Let's use scapegoat and completely, completely you know, attack immigrants and children so that we can win the White House. This is where we are today. And, and let me be clear, Donald Trump would be devastating to our country, to immigrants, uh, to people of color, uh, to LGBT people, to reproductive justice. The list goes on. He would be despicable. This is why in this moment, our president having the courage that in absence of legislative action, to use his executive powers to do the things that others haven't done is going to be absolutely critical in this moment and essential. Because we can't have Trump become the president, but we have to be able to demonstrate what we do with the power that we do have. Well put. Uh, Congresswoman, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you.